You're what? I'm receiving some sort of transmission. Routed through the main system. Routing. Looking to take a Disney vacation or cruise? Contact Kristen of MagicalJourneysVacations.com. Magical Journeys is an authorized Disney vacation planner. Kristen will get you the best price available and continue to search for deals until the day you travel, taking the worry out of planning your fantastic vacation. Kristen can help plan your dining reservations and answer any questions you may have. She'll even send you maps from the parks. So contact Kristen of Magical Journeys for your next cruise or Disney vacation, and you'll be supporting WDW Tiki Room. Contact Kristen of Magical Journeys at MagicalJourneysVacations.com. And make and Sorcerer Radio. So what are you waiting for? Book today at MagicalJourneysVacations.com. Wow, that sounds great. I want to go. Well, you can't. Why not? Because we have to stay at our posts and keep rebel scum like him out. Book today at MagicalJourneysVacations.com. You're listening to a Weeby Geeks Network podcast. The Dining at Disney podcast. The Dining at Disney podcast. Your ultimate source about the wonderful world of dining at the Disneyland and Walt Disney World Resorts. If you are what you eat, then I only want to eat the good stuff. Kristen Hetzel Go and Jay Bratton are your guides on this culinary adventure. We'll prepare and serve with flair a culinary cabaret. Join them as they discuss the latest food news, expert tips, recommendations, and trip planning advice related to Disney food and dining. From quick service to fine dining, you will discover all the best restaurants and food as they hungrily explore the Disney parks. It brings folks together from all walks of life. The Dining at Disney podcast. And now, your host, Kristen Hetzel Go and Jay Bratton. The Dining at Disney podcast, your ultimate source for delicious discussion about dining at Disneyland and Disney World. I'm your host, Kristen Hetzel, and with me is Jay Braddon. How are things going this week, Jay? Um, pretty good, pretty good. How about yourself? It's doing pretty good. Cool. We, you know, it's just started. <laughs> <laughs> Well, today we have a lot of discussions. We're going to be talking about the changes to the 26, uh, 2016 Disney dining plans at Walt Disney World, as well as we've got some discussion about new restaurants that have opened and are being refurbished, how you can win a Disney World vacation from Joffrey's, the Sleeping Beauty uh, cake from Grand Californian, Word wieners, special snacks, and s'mores, as well as our top five summer treats. So before we get into that, though, we want to thank you for downloading the show on iTunes, uh, as well as streaming it on Stitcher and watching the webcast on YouTube. Be sure to like and subscribe to our feeds. Don't forget to share this with your friends. A uh, way that you can help us keep the show going is to support us by shopping our affiliate links. We've got the Disney Store, Garden Grocers, and Jelly Belly. You can also pick one up, uh, one of the ebooks up. We have the Epcot Dining Guide, as well as the Epcot International Food and Wine Festival Guide. Right now, the 2014 is out there, but. Later this summer, we will be releasing the one for 2015. Now, on to our appetizers. So what's going on in the Disneyland news, Jay? Well, we have a few things going on here. Uh, first off, over at the Grand Californian uh, Hotel and Spa, they constructed a huge cake. I mean, this thing is gigantic. It's over three feet tall. And uh, it features, you know, the, the castle, Sleeping Beauty Castle, uh, with all the bling on it. And it's just magnificent looking. Uh, if you go to the DiningAtDisney.com website and uh, click on the link for the story, you can see pictures of it. And they put, a, they put a lot of detail on that sucker. I mean, I'm talking like, you know, it's, you know all the little the, the diamonds and, and, you know, all the bling and all that stuff. I mean, I was astounded. You know, the level of detail is just, just magnificent. Um, yeah, it was the same crew that put together the Haunted Mansion gingerbread house. Uh, well, I, I wouldn't say it's a gingerbread house. The, the one that they did at the Haunted Mansion holiday, uh, I guess it was kind of like a coffin or something like that. So anyways, the, that, uh, the same crew put together this uh, Sleeping Beauty Castle, which is uh, amazing. Uh, the I guess uh, what they used was 54 pounds of rice cereal, uh, 18 pounds of marshmallow, 
40 oh my pounds gosh. of gum paste. <laughs> I know. 30 pounds of white chocolate and 15 pounds of fondant, which is like, whoa, are you kidding me? But uh, oh yeah, gosh. the level of detail is just just outstanding. I, I, I've said that three times, the level of detail, because it's just when you actually look at it, it's amazing how accurate they were able to represent the castle. So that's kind of cool. The only thing they're missing is lights. <laughs> but I guess maybe that's asking too much. You have to wonder how long it took them to make that cake. Uh, according to the story, it took 140 hours for them to to create it from from like concept to design to implementation. It's just, it, you know, there's engineers, there's, uh, you know, bakers, cooks, you know, the, the whole, you know, I, I'm trying to look how many people are actually involved in this thing. Uh, I'm not sure, but anyways, if you read the story, I'm sure that it'll say how many people are involved in it. In it in its entirety um but yeah it did have like artists and chefs and engineers so I mean, you know there's quite a quite a lot of work went into that sucker it sounds like one of those cakes that you see on those uh food competition shows on the food network exactly. you know where it takes them like hours they have this full team and you know they're <laughs> making these crazy things you're like oh and then of course they have to move it so the whole time at the end of the show when everybody's like putting it on the presentation table you're like watching going, don't fall, don't fall. And it's so many times I've seen those poor, like either the candy or the cake designs just collapse before they get it to the day. But I'm like, oh, that's awful. Yeah, those, you know, those shows used to be my favorite on the on the Food Network. And then all of a sudden Food Network started getting into these kind of reality competition things and like, uh, okay, whatever. I mean, you know, I, you know I, for people who like that, you know, I, that's fine. It's just me. I, I I like to be educated and entertained. I don't want to see a bunch of people barking at each other and and uh, you know cutting cutting each other off at the knees, so to speak. You know, while they're they're trying to create dishes and stuff. So whatever. I actually know somebody who had been on the worst cooks one. Oh really? Oh wow, yeah. that's cool. Oh, gosh. But then when you start talking about some of the things you didn't know, you're like, uh, that seems to me very common sense. <laughs> but <laughs> I guess that's how you get on the show. You know, I always thought those people like, like kind of made up that stuff, you know, in order to be on it and make it seem that these people are, you know, worse than they are. But I guess not. Yeah, well. That's, you know, you never know. I mean, there's, there's, you know, there's a wide array of people out there and, you know, some people have different skill levels when it comes to cooking. But that show's funny though. Have you ever watched it? No, I, you know, I don't know. It just didn't really appeal to me so much. I just, I, like you, like you said, I, I just kind of felt like it was kind of all fixed that it was essentially like people can't be that bad. You know I mean? You, uh -huh. you know, it's, it's really difficult to, you know, burn toast, you know, well, maybe not burn toast, but whatever. I mean, you know, burn things that, you know, you normally wouldn't burn in situations where you're, where you're cooking. So. Yeah. It's interesting. So anyhow, uh, uh, in other news, uh, have you seen the movie inside out yet? I have not. Have you? I did. I saw it the other day and it's wonderful. It's a great it? movie. Yeah, it's it's definitely uh Pixar has got their their mojo back. You know, the last few Pixar films, let's be honest, they weren't so great. You know, I mean it's just like, eh, I don't know, Cars 2 was didn't didn't really kind of do it for me. Brave was eh. you know, I mean it was okay, it was good, but it just didn't have that same emotional impact that you know some of the others uh, had you know i mean oh, yeah uh, you know whatever i mean i can name a, you know toy story obviously you know i mean the whole the whole gamut uh previous to the last few films but inside out you know they definitely got their groove back and uh, you know they really kind of it appeals to people of many ages and and you know even adults can kind of get into it it's just like oh yeah you know it's it's you know it's, it's a good all-around family film for sure That's cool. uh, but at Disney California Adventure, they decided to pay homage to the film by introducing a few new menu items at award wieners. Uh, the first one is called the Angry Dog. And this one is a, a, a hot link, um, and it's inside a jalapeno cheddar bun. 
And on top, they put pepper jack cheese, jalapenos, bell peppers, onions, and a sriracha ketchup, which, woohoo! I mean, that's that's just like sounds absolutely amazing and just it's something I definitely want to try. Besides the yeah. bell peppers, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can put the bell peppers on the side or whatever. Just ask for extra <laughs> jalapenos. So can you switch those out? <laughs> right, exactly. I'm sure they, they'd be accommodating to that. So. Oh, I'm sure they would. Uh, then the other, for the people who don't like spicy so much, uh, there's the Joy Dog. And the Joy Dog, well, no, excuse me, it's called the Jubilant Joy Dog. I've got to make sure to get that adjective in there, the Jubilant. Uh, this is a sweet Italian sausage uh, with cheddar cheese, lettuce, and bell peppers. And on top, they put chopped bacon, crispy onion pieces, and a tangy, tangy uh, honey mustard uh, with pickle rush as well. Sorry. <laughs> And uh, that looks like that's on like a French roll or something. I, I'm not sure. The other one has a jalapeno cheddar bun. This one, they didn't really describe the roll, but it, it kind of basically looks like a, a French roll to me, which is good. You know, that uh, looks looks outstanding. I think uh, the first dog sounds good to me. Right. Yeah, well, same with here. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm spicy all the way. Uh, so also... Uh, for uh, drinks, uh, they have a couple of offerings. Uh, the first one is called the Joyful Splash. And this one's a Sprite soda, and they add some extra citrus flavor, so it kind of punches up that citrusy, you know, flavoring of the of the Sprite, the natural, well, I guess it wouldn't be natural because Sprite is artificial, <laughs> artificially <laughs> flavored. But uh, anyways, it, yeah, it's, it punches up the citrus flavoring regardless. Uh, and then sort of to tone things down, to mellow it out, they add a bit of vanilla, which I thought was really, uh, really interesting. And then they also are going to have a lemonade called the Spicy Fearless Lemonade. And this thing is is like an amazing concoction of a variety of flavors. It's, uh, let's see, it starts with ginger ale as the base, and then it has Minute Maid Light Lemonade, Pear pineapple and then it has a kick of chipotle in it as well so i was uh, i was pretty intrigued about this uh this offering um it uh looks really uh really good yeah that sounds good to me when i make margaritas at home i slice up a jalapeno and put them in the drinks as well and it gives them just a little bit of that heat from it Oh yeah, because the oils kind of you know dissolve into the, into the drink mixture. So yep. as you're drinking it, you get that little extra spice. It's awesome. Yeah, I love that too. Uh, and then if you're looking for a little souvenir, uh, they do have the the sipper cup. It's nothing. The sipper cup is it was a little bit disappointing. It's kind of one of the same. You know, you can go to your convenience store like a Seven Eleven or whatever and get something similar so that you know I was hoping that they would have some kind of like a character design and they've been doing so awesome I mean look at all the stuff behind me you know what I mean oh, yeah. like all the all the you know souvenir uh, popcorn buckets and mugs and stuff like that and then they come out with this inside out thing the uh, inside out zipper and I'm like huh really <laughs> but uh, they should have been character mugs right um, for each of the character that they are you know that drink is named after true, that true. I, cool. I agree well yeah i'm not sure if they anticipated this movie would do as well as it did so maybe that's the reason why they kind of hedged their bets so to speak uh by offering this generic design uh, that's just me speculating but uh, regardless uh yeah it's i mean essentially it's you know the art movie artwork inside a, a clear plastic super cup so you know i mean if you really have to have something then hey you know there you go and the last bit of news and this just came out today by the way uh it was announced on the disney parks blog i wrote up a little story so if you want to check it out it's dining at disney.com they are going to have s'mores and it's not just like just one offering of a s'more treat. It's actually four different things that they're going to do have uh, during the month of July. Uh, the first one is the gourmet apple, of course. I mean, you know, they seem to turn apples into all kinds of crazy things, you know, and, and uh, this is no different. And this thing is uh, going to be uh, coated in caramel and chocolate and then uh, coated or, you know, on top will be graham cracker chunks and 
what I'm kind of excited about is the toasted marshmallows. So they have little mini marshmallows all over this thing <laughs> and they have them toasted, which I love that flavor. I love that the, the toasted marshmallow flavor is just so, just so awesome. And then, uh, of course, you know, they do a little chocolate drizzle on top because, you know, there's not enough sugar already, right? And, yeah, uh, you definitely, definitely need that extra sugar. Sure, sure. Uh, and then uh, the next uh, item that they have is the what they're calling the marshmallow wand, which is similar to a, a ticker tail. And this thing is essentially the, the giant, uh, big, giant marshmallows that they, they put together on a uh, little stick. And then on top of that, you know, they do the same thing that they do with the apple with the, with the caramel and the chocolate and then the ground cracker pieces uh, with the toasted marshmallows and the chocolate drizzle on top of that. And then the third thing is the crispy treat. Now, the crispy treat, again, it's the same components as the other ones. The only difference between uh, the crispy treat and the, the apple and the marshmallow wand is that they don't use the caramel. So uh, I don't know why they didn't do that. I mean, you know, if you're going to go do it, I mean, go big, right? Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyways, the, uh, yeah, the, basically it's chocolate with graham crackers uh, with the toasted marshmallows on top. And did you see a picture of this thing yet? I have not. Okay. So if you look at, the, at, at our website and you see the picture, this crispy treat, you know, it's supposed to be the Mickey head, but I, I tell you what, that thing looks like it, it should be around for Halloween because that's scary looking. I, honestly, it looks <laughs> like Mickey Mouse kind of had a zombie oh, outbreak or something. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, it's kind of like, it, it really looks funky. I mean, you can kind of tell that it's a Mickey head, but when you look at it, it kind of looks all deformed and like, I don't know, it's like... The oh, no kidding. Yeah, ap apocalyptic ip Mickey. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, the marshmallows just don't work on it. Right, exactly. Uh, the last oh. thing... <laughs> Uh, the last thing that they have is the s'mores bark, which I thought was pretty cool, too. Uh, this is essentially like chocolate and marshmallows mixed together. There's no caramel. And this has the – they say it's, they have the toasted marshmallows, but I don't know. I mean, it kind of looks like they, they – you know, the little – whatever the torch that they use to, to toast the marshmallows miss these marshmallows on this particular treat. Uh, regardless, uh, you know, it's the same essential components, but, um, you know, I thought it was a really cool uh, thing that they brought these to Disneyland. It, it, you know, I remember as a kid going to, you know, the camping retreats and things like that. And, you know, of course the, the quintessential summertime treat, you know, for a campfire is the s'more, you know, you toast the marshmallow, you get the little chunk of chocolate and get the ground crackers, smush that thing through. And, you know, it's, it's just, it's wonderful. I mean, it's great, great memories. I'm always picky about, the toasting of my marshmallows because you know a lot of people want it like black on the outside right. and then gooey on the inside i'm like i hate that burnt taste so right. i have to make sure it doesn't get you know it's just at the right like yeah it has to be kind, kind fire, of like a so. medium, medium to dark brown that's uh, that's i'm with you on that one yeah i'm like oh i just want nice nice and toasted but i don't want it to turn black and I've, I've been that way since I was a kid. Like, I wouldn't eat burnt hot dogs or anything like that. So, to this day, my dad still puts mine on a different section of the grill so they don't <laughs> burn because he says I don't want to eat it that way. Right. That's cool. So, that's all I have for news. Okay. And over at Walt Disney World, I've got a few stories. One of them is uh, the restaurants that have recently opened. One of them is the new gelato restaurant. Uh, location in downtown Disney that came from Italy. It's called Vivoli Gelateria. It's uh, based out of uh, Florence. So it's a Florentine uh, gelateria and they use fresh products. Some of the stuff's actually going to be shipped in from Italy. So I'm looking forward to trying that. Uh, Zuri's Sweet Shop it opened up in Disney's Animal Kingdom. It's part of that Harambe market we've talked about before. Um, an interesting piece of news about this is it hasn't been open but like a couple weeks. And one of the desserts here I was talking about was they were called Match the Species. And they do this actually at the beginning 
they, they were doing this at the beginning of um, at the park at one point. And they had poop on display from the different animals. Um, of course, it's been treated. <laughs> so if you touch it, you're not going to get poop on your hand. Um, but they have these made into treats. So you can get, you could get giraffe, elephant, rhino, and cotton top, tamarind, uh, poop, candy. Well, go However, ahead. apparently, no, no, no. Hold on, let me see. interrupt you real quick because I, you know, that just that's just out of this world. I gotta go there to Disney World just to just get those poop treats. <laughs> okay, well, this is the thing. According to them, they have sold out and they will not be bringing them back. Ah, oh. and what what it seems to be that the majority of people. Uh, have thought is what really has happened. People have complained because it looks like poop. And so that they've, they pulled him from the shelves. That's what people are speculating really happened. There's no way of knowing, but I mean, I could absolutely see that people go, this is gross. Like, I don't want to look at poop in a case, even though it's, you know, chocolate, you know, caramel, oats, pretzels, peanut butter, all like mixed together. But, you know, that's the thing. I mean, that's fun for the kids, right? I, I, I would totally get that. Are you kidding me? I, I would totally be on top of that. I, I, I want them to bring it to Disneyland. How about that? Now, see, my thought was, can you imagine if you gave this to a kid who was about three or four who can't quite distinguish between real and fake yet? And so they see animal poop somewhere and then pick it up thinking it's going to taste like that yeah well they'll know the difference real quick then it's yes. a good learning lesson <laughs> <laughs> but i was like i could just imagine that happening to some kid you know like three years old mom and dad aren't quite paying attention you know they're looking at the park map and the next thing they know juniors pick some up thinking it's like the one he had in the candy store but i was gonna try it why not but yeah they say they are not bringing it back and i'm just sold out Oh, boo. Yeah, I felt the same <laughs> way. Another thing is uh, Joffrey's coffee. Um, if you like this coffee, of course, they do have a location in uh, it's Creature Comforts. It's over in the Discovery Island area of Disney's Animal Kingdom. It's uh, like when you, if you're walking into the park, and you have to make in front of the tree, right or left. You turn left, you go right past, um, what's it called? Uh, Pizza, Pizza Safari. And it's right past that same sign. And you can pick up your coffee there. Uh, one of the coolest things that they're doing is they're going to support conservation. So the cotton top tamarind. They're going to donate to that cause a portion from the flat white lattes. So they, they chose that one because they, you know, the, the tamarinds have the little fuzzy white top. And so they thought since that latte had a white top, that that would be a perfect thing to use for their conservation efforts. So I thought that was pretty cool. It's always a good thing. Support and it's support Starbucks them. that's doing that. Starbucks. Oh, Starbucks. Okay. Starbucks. Cool. Yeah, I, I was figured, thinking I mean, Jeffrey's I'm, coffee because I got a story later about them. <laughs> yeah, Starbucks is very much into the uh, oh. you know, environmentalism and things like that. You know, they are very particular about sourcing their their coffee and stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I was into coffee, I'd probably prefer them because of that. Uh, but since I'm not, then huh, doesn't really matter to me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but it's just that location that's going to be doing that. But I like that. You know, it's a little something different at, at Animal Kingdom. And then last but not least of our schedule of uh, openings and refurbishments is going to be the list of refurbishments that will start next year. Planet Hollywood, as we've talked about in the past, it's getting a whole new look. And in order to do that extensive refurbishment, they're going to be closed January 1st through 
June 1st of next year. And also Fulton's Crab House is going to close. It's going to be closed January 1st through April 1st. So those are some exciting changes that will be coming. The Planet Hollywood, what they're doing, the artwork for that looks amazing. Then on to Joffrey's. This is why I got confused earlier. <laughs> I already had this contest in my head. Uh, Joffrey's is the official coffee of Disney. And right now what they're going to be doing is they're giving you a chance to win a five-day Fortnite package for four to Disney World. It's going to include airfare, hotel, theme park, theme park tickets, and a $50 Joffrey's beverage card that you can use at their various locations throughout Disney World. Um, all you have to do is, uh, we actually have the link on Dining at Disney, but you go to joffreys.com. There's going to be, uh, it's called Joffrey's Magic in Your Mug Sweepstakes. You just fill out the form. It's only a couple things you put on there and like that you are entered and what they'll do is give you a send you a coupon via email so you can get 20 i think it's 20 percent off i think is what they sent me um for their disney parks and resort specialty coffee collection because they have tons of those and you can enter now through july 15th so you don't have a lot of time but you've got some you could enter jay Oh, that's what I'm doing right now. I, I didn't know if you heard the, the typing in the background. I'm like, on top I, of this. <laughs> I was like, well, I, I, I wasn't planning going to Disney World for, for a long time. But, uh, hey, if I win it, I'm, I'm on it. You know, I'll, I'll definitely uh -huh. make, make an exception and go there sooner rather than later. And see, so you can go and sit. I traveled all this way for the animal poop. Where is my exactly. giraffe poop? That's right. I'm going to be hammering the counter. Where's my animal poop? Where's my animal poop? <laughs> oh, gosh. Can you imagine if somebody did that? They'd think you were crazy. Um, and my last bit of news has to do with the changes to the 2016 Disney dining plan. And last week, Walt Disney World just released those 2016 rooms and packages. And when they do that, that means the dining plan is released as well. And some of these changes I'm going to talk about um, are going to be because these restaurants are not owned by Disney. They are owned by a, a third party. And so those that are individually owned and operated from Disney, they often wait till the very last minute to renew because their, their contracts with the dining plan or are for one year at a time. So. So don't freak out when I go through this. It's Some of it's just going to be, it's just for now, and things will be added. So starting with the quick service Disney dining plan, some of the changes are the removal of the locations at Disney's Coronado Springs, over at Epcot, Katsura Grill, La Cantina de San Angel, uh, La Hale's Bougelerie and Patisserie, all of those are not listed. Over at Disney's Animal Kingdom, Creatures Comforts has been added, and so is the Harambe Market. Yak and Yeti Local Foods is missing. That one is not owned by Disney. And then in downtown Disney, uh, Bongo's Cuban Cafe, Cooks of Dublin, Earl of Sandwich, The Smokehouse, Starbucks, Wolfgang Puck's Express, West Side, and the Marketplace, as well as Express at Wolfgang Puck Cafe are all missing from the list. Now, there's a very slight increase to the plan. For ages 10 and up, it's 85 cents. And for ages 3 to 9, it's $1.44. So the increase isn't bad on the plan. The uh, basic Disney dining plan changes, of course, include all of the ones that I just listed for the quick service, as well as the uh, Boardwalk Inn Villas, the Big River Grill and Brew Works has been removed, Coronado Springs restaurants have been removed, 
None of Coronado Springs uh, restaurants are owned by Disney. They're all uh, owned individually. Really? Uh, yeah. Same yeah. is true of Epcot. There's a lot of restaurants in Epcot that they don't own. So wow, that, that's news to me. Well, I know. I mean, you know, like some of the ones, the the celebrity chefs or whatever. I would assume that Disney didn't own them, and obviously that new place, uh, what's it called, the um, Boathouse. You know, I knew that that wasn't owned by them either. But you know, that's downtown or Disney Springs or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but as far as like stuff that's on property, where wait, Coronado Springs? I'm not. I, I'm sorry, I'm not as familiar with Disney World. I, it's on that, property. Interesting. Oh, wow. Huh. Crazy. Now, when I get into Epcot now, this is a is quite a long list. Le Chefs de France, La Hacienda de San Angel, Monsieur Paul, Nine Dragons Restaurant, Restaurant Marrakesh, San Angel Inn Restaurante, Spice Row Table, Teppanito, Tokyo Dining, Tutto Italia Restaurante, and Via Napoli, Restaurante e Pizzeria are missing from the list. Uh, I guess that's because all of those are individually owned. Actually, all of all of the restaurants in the Mexico Pavilion are owned by, I believe the company is called San Angel Inc., something like that. But uh, I actually met the guy who, who owns it when... La Hacienda opened, he happened to be sitting next to uh, Aljon and I in in the restaurant. And he started talking to us. And then come to find out, you know, he's at the end of the meal, found out he's he's the owner. So that was kind of cool. cool. Yeah, it's kind of Yeah, he's from Mexico City. So it's really? funny. He's like, yeah. So he was telling, uh, telling us how to properly eat the things on the plate. <laughs> <laughs> Um, again, no downtown Disney, uh, restaurants on the list. This plan also went up slightly for ages 10 and up, it went up a dollar 20 and for kids it's 173. And the biggest change in the most disappointing change comes with the deluxe Disney dining plan, which is my favorite, and that's part of how I ended up getting to eat at so many restaurants. Because the way this one works is they give you three credits per night, and you can choose either table service or quick service. So you could eat three table service meals a day if that's how you want to do it. So that's a, a lot of restaurants you know, to yeah, dine at. a lot of food, yeah, for sure. And it had included an appetizer, entree, dessert, and non-alcoholic beverage, or you would get a full buffet. Now, they removed the appetizer, which I'm not happy with. I don't like that. I That's part of the reason I got that plan is I wanted the appetizer. The dessert I could, you know, have boxed up, take back to the room for later, I'm not a big dessert person. Sometimes I got things that I could just put in the refrigerator and, you know, take back home and eat later. But uh, that's, you know, that's disappointing that now you just get entree, dessert, and non-alcoholic beverage. And the other thing is they increased the price, which you would have thought, well, with removing something, it should go down a little bit. But it doesn't. The price increase for ten and up is two twenty, and for kids it's two seventy. So that makes that pan, plan over a hundred and eleven dollars per person per night for adults. Wow. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I don't know. That's you know I did the Disney dining plan when I went there, and honestly, if I was to go, you know, well, the next time I go to Disney World, I, I doubt that I'll get the dining plan. It's just, to me, it was too much food. Uh, like, and it, I didn't feel like there was a lot of flexibility for the things I, I wanted. I, I like to kind of play fast and loose. I mean, certain things, of course, I'm going to make res reservations for, you know, the, the nicer restaurants and things like that. But, 
you know, like when I'm doing counter service, I don't want to be restricted to, you know, what I'm going to get or forced to get something I don't want to get. I mean, you know, like, oh, you have to get a snack item or what? Like, I don't want a snack item. You know, that's how I winded up with all these souvenirs, our gingerbread cookies. That luckily, was yeah. you know, so I, I, I was able to utilize them for, for, you know, for that purpose. But honestly, it just, it was just so much, you know, and I kind of felt compelled, like, okay, I don't want to waste the money, you know, because obviously I, I bought this thing. Um, but at the same time, you know, in the future, I think that I would just say, hey, it's okay. I'll just, I'll pay cash on my own, you know, or yeah. credit card or whatever. I liked it because I could, you know, use two credits and go to this is some of the signature dining restaurants like Narcosis and not have to worry about the price on the menu. You know, I can order true. whatever I wanted and $80 for, you know, surf and turf. I wouldn't be thinking, ah, uh, do I really want to spend that or should I get this? It's, you know, 42. That's true. That's no, just that, the way my mind works. Sure. So sure. for me, that was, a nice thing about I don't have to worry about the cost of it just get whatever you really like yeah so well maybe if anything I'd probably do like a lower dining plan or something like that that's maybe maybe a better plan then that way I can kind of mix and match what I want to do what I you know what I you know that kind of thing yeah uh, they uh they should have done an option of you can choose an appetizer or a dessert right because I'd rather skip the dessert and have the appetizer, and I'm just not crazy about how they've done that. Especially since, you know, Disney Channel, the company decided to pull, you know, not allow certain things to be advertised on the Disney channels because they wanted it to be targeting you know, healthy eating, healthy lifestyles to kids. But then they're going to have you get a dessert. <laughs> Not in you don't have an option. You're going to get a dessert. So I just don't like that. I feel like it's like until it eats into their pocket a little bit. Because, well, of course, think, an appetizer is going to cost more than a dessert. Right. That's exactly what I was about to say. You know, appetizers, the, the food costs of, of those are, are high, more high, than, more high, uh, are higher than uh, than a dessert. I mean, dessert oh. is, you know, really, really inexpensive. I know their they're stockholders want their money, but sure. I want my appetizer back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as I mentioned I do anticipate seeing additional restaurants added to this list um, over the next seven, six, seven months, you know, before the end of the year. Um, like I said, independently owned and operated, so they do wait to the last minute to renew their contracts. The good thing is the inc price increase is very minimal on these. That's, you know, a plus to it. It could have gone up more. Uh, but, oh, well. Well, that's all the news I have. So are you ready to talk about our entree? Absolutely. And we are discussing for our main dish, our top five summer treats. So it's hot outside. You need something cold and refreshing. Okay, Jay, what you got? All right. Well, I think that uh, we'll probably have maybe one or two things that are kind of cross-connecting since uh, they, they're available at both parks, or both resorts, I should say. Uh, the first item, of course, I mean, this is like, you know, I think the most obvious choice, which is the Dole Whip. I mean, uh, how can you not have a Dole Whip for <laughs> summer? <laughs> You got to head on over to the tiki 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 room and then uh, pick yourself up a Dole Whip and just chill out in the uh, queue area for the tiki room and, and uh, enjoy your treat and uh, cool down there. Uh, if you must, if you got to take it on the go. Actually, uh, just kind of a little bit of a side note of I, this uh, woman, um, she was doing a radio show for uh, what was the... Um, I don't want to say it's NPR. It's something, I don't know if it was like NPR or PBS or something like that. Anyway, she was doing like some kind of radio show and she was going to talk about the Dole Whip, right? 
And I, she says, well, you know, tell me, tell me about the doll. So I gave her the whole lowdown, you know, the history and stuff like that. And one of the things I said is she says, well, like, you know, what is it so special about having the doll up there in the Tiki Room queue? And I said, well, have you been to the Tiki Room queue? I mean, it's like the perfect place for it. I mean, you know, like how else can you enjoy? I said, you know, if you take, you know, it goes back to the whole uh, thing when we talked about the churro and, and, and uh, you know, the turkey leg and stuff like that. There's certain foods that are just appropriate to a certain location. You know, and, and the dole to me is definitely, you know, that signifies uh, Adventureland and, and, and more specifically, you know, the Tiki Room. Um, so, I mean, if you must take the dole up on the go, uh, you know, don't do yourself a favor. Don't don't walk to Main Street. Don't walk through, you know, Frontierland. Just just walk through Adventureland. Just take the, the long way around and, and go to New Orleans Square or wherever you're going to be heading to and and just enjoy the atmosphere. You know, it's it's part of part of the the special, you know, uh, the special experience that you have while eating a, a Dole Whip. Speaking of food and locations, not the next episode, but the one after that, we actually had a listener listener request to discuss some of the things like foods and the theming and their placement. So we'll have to talk about that. Oh, yeah, definitely. Some more. Sure. We can expound on that topic. No problem. I feel very passionate about ambience, okay? (laughs) So uh, the next uh, treat that I have on my list for summer will be the mint chocolate chip ice cream. And you can get this at Gibson Girl Ice Cream Parlor or Clara Barrel's Hand Scooped Ice Cream as as well. And just there's something about the ice cream, the mint, you know, just kind of cools you off. And then you also get that little bit of chocolatey and, you know, chocolate, you know, I love chocolate. And so do many people. And, and, uh, you know, the, the cream, the, you know, the, the minty flavor of the ice cream itself, you know, just everything just, just works well together. And it's just, you know, it's, it's when it's hot outside, you know, you, you cool down, uh, in the air conditioning uh, of Gibson Girl or, well, Claire Rails doesn't really have any seating, but you can go next door to Fiddler Fife, Pfeiffer and Practical Cafe and, and sit down in there. But, uh, you know, the thing is that, you know, the mint chocolate chip ice cream just, I think, is the, you know, the perfect way to cool down both, you know, inside and out. Then the next item I'm going to get, I'm going adult here. So for the 21 in year, 21 year old and over uh, crowd, I'm doing a beer. And see, yeah. I, I saved my 21 and up as uh, uh, honorable mentions. Honorable mentions. Okay. Yes. Well, I, it, you know, for me, it's, it's a must have. So that's because that's just me and I'm over 21. And if I want a beer, I'm going to have a beer. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there's, there's, you know, there's a lot of good beers at, at, uh, at you know, the, dis- well, I was going to say Disneyland Resort, but more specifically DCA, because, I mean, you can get some at downtown Disney and, and also, um, you know, DCA, but not Disneyland, obviously. But, uh, you know, I was kind of tossing up, like, which of the beers I would want as a summertime treat, and just... Something about the the Tower Ten IPA, it just I mean, it is a bit on the bitter side uh, because you know it's it's a, it's you know, quite hoppy, but it's also refreshing at the same time. It's sort of like you know if you're salivating and stuff like that, it kind of dries your mouth out almost, you know. And then so that's the thing. It's it's cool, refreshing, and and uh, dry at the same time. So if you're sweating, you know you don't want to you know you want something, you know, just that drier sensation, then you can taste it with that beer. Uh, they also, uh, for the summer, I believe they have, uh, there's, if they're, they have two different beers. There's one called Endless Summer, and I'm not sure if that's on tap now at Bayside Brews, or there's another one called Wind and Sea Wheat. And both of those are pretty good, too. They're, they're pretty refreshing, and, and um, you know, those would be alternate choices for me. Yeah, I haven't seen the. Did you say wind and sea? Yeah, wind and wind and sea. Yeah, W I N D A N D S E A. It's all one word. I mean, it's okay. wind and sea. You know, technically three words, put but they, yeah, put together, correct. So, wind and sea wheat, and uh, the wind and sea wheat is uh, sort of like not a traditional 
Belgian, I mean, um, uh, wheat beer. Uh, it's, it's kind of like a mixture. It's a hybrid wheat beer, I guess. And then, um, so anyways, uh, you know, that's at Bayside Brews. Uh, you know, again, downtown Disney, you can go to you know, various locations and they have different beers. But I just, I don't know, those that, that particular one just sparks my my taste. Uh, and then for dessert, this one, it, I mean, it's sort of on the heavier side for summertime treat, but I kind of like it because it reminds me of America. I mean, we're coming up on July 4th, right? You know, red, white, and blue, yay, wave the flag and all that <laughs> stuff. And what's more American than apple pie? And so you go to, to uh, Flo's V8 Cafe and they have a cheddar apple pie. And I love that it's a smaller portion. So, I mean, honestly, two people could share it comfortably. Um, but, it, you know, if, if you're hungry or, you know, you just want to be, you know, a greedy little monster, you can have that sucker all of yourself as well. And uh, I like that as well. I like that because of the fact that, you know, again, it's, it's apple pie. But I like that little extra bite of the cheddar uh, and, and then, you know, offers a bit of creaminess as well. And I like the crust on it. It's the crust is a little tough, but you know, I, nothing you know that would deter me from getting it because obviously I put it on my you know top five treats, right? Uh, but yeah, I, I definitely enjoy that. Have you had that yet? I have not. It is okay. on my list of things to try, and I always go in there, and it's like breakfast or something when I'm just not all about eating it. And I go, I'm going to come back next time and get this. And yeah, then- I mean, here's the thing is that, you know, when, when you're in the mood for a snack and you're in Cars Line, what do you think of? The Cozy Cone Motel, obviously. Yeah. And, you know, that's the thing. I mean, there's popcorn, there's the churro bites, you, you know, there's the, the cones, uh, the, the car, uh, cone carne, you know, the, you know, cone and stuff like that. So chili cone carne. Uh, but you know, people kind of look at flows as like, oh, I got to sit down inside and everything like that. Well, that's not necessarily the case. You can go in there and order. I mean, it's counter service for for goodness sake. Yeah. You know, you just you know, pick up your your apple pie and just just be on your way. I mean, there's no you know, there's no uh, rule against uh, you know taking the food to go. The last time I was in there, I was in there specifically to get a beer. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, they they carry uh, the. Um, Racer 5 IPA. I like Racer 5 as well, but Tower 10 I, I like a little bit better. They've got, they also carry the Carl Strauss Red Trolley. Well, red Trolley, right, exactly. I like that one. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, it, it has a nice mellow flavor and it uh, goes well with a lot of dishes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then my final, uh, my final treat is uh, one of the, the 60th anniversary uh, treats that they just released. And it's over at Jolly Holiday Cafe, uh, Bakery Cafe, and it's called the Frozen Pomegranate Silver Silver Sparkler. Whew, that's a mouthful, right? No kidding. <laughs> uh, my wife had bought it, and uh, we were walking around the park, and, and I tasted it, and I was like, oh, this is really refreshing. And, it, you know, it's a slushy. The, my only, I, I guess, criticism is the fact that by the end of the drink, the the ice crystals are a little bit thick, so it's almost like you have like a like a miniature snow cone at the at the end. But it's not a fine crystal snow cone; it's kind of like a rough, a coarse texture, uh, which basically turns into to water. You know, like little miniature size ice cubes, I guess, if you will. Or I, I shouldn't say miniature; they're more like micro sized ice cubes. So <laughs> you, you drink all the flavor out of the the uh, the rest of the drink, but you know you have all that leftover icy stuff and you know that that's my only criticism but the flavor combination itself is really good um, you know they they use uh, the pomegranate and i'm not sure what else uh, it comprises of that uh, drink um it tasted like there's the uh, maybe like a foam like a passion fruit foam on there um you know again i i they haven't i haven't seen anything uh, where they parse out the ingredients uh, or the the list of of uh, what makes up this drink but regardless i mean it, it is good and it was uh, refreshing and and uh it's one of those new summertime treats that i added to the list you'll have to ask him next time you're there go what absolutely is this? <laughs> i need to know well see that's the thing i wasn't with my wife she was uh oh. she had bought it and then we had met up somewhere else so that's the thing i wasn't there to to ask them well you know wait what's up what's the deal yo yeah <laughs> You have to remind her next time she does that. Right, right. You need to find out what's in that. (laughs) 
So that's it. That's my five. Okay. So on to my five at Walt Disney World. Now, again, this one is going to overlap with yours slightly because mine is the Dole Whip float. Mm. I prefer the float. And they recently, remember we had talked about where they switched some of the restaurant locations? Right. Well, they sw- switched a lower aisle to be next to the Tiki Room. So cool. it'd be nice if they would let you take them in like you guys can, but they won't let us bring drinks into ours. Really? But yeah. I, I never weird? knew that. Wow. That's interesting. Yeah, the first time I went to Disney, I was like, I can bring this in? This is so cool. Yeah, well, when I went to Disney World, they were refurbing uh, the the ride or the attraction. Um, they were transitioning from under new management back to the traditional Tiki Room. So, yeah, where Iago I mean, caught fire. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, that's that's. Uh, I remember. Uh, you know, I think that was the reason why. I, I, and uh, yeah, so I because I was a little disappointed. I kind of wanted to see it just to compare and contrast with the original Tiki Room and what what this whole deal is about Iago and stuff and. So, uh, uh, anyways, regardless, I'll just have to watch it on YouTube or something. <laughs> the thing that made me sad about them reversing it was the fact that when you entered entered and were waiting in the line, the pre-show had the voice of Phil Hartman. Mm. Which, you know, he's gone now. Now yeah, he's gone from the park. And... Um, Oh, gosh. Which part was it? Um, oh, my gosh. I just forgot his name. Um, Jose? No, the uh, the French one. Oh, uh, Pierre. Pierre. Yes. Pierre was voiced by Jerry Orbach. Mm. And, of course, he is no longer with us either. So that just made me sad when that was gone. I was like, oh, I can't hear their voices anymore. Yeah. So, yeah, that was my disappointment with that. But your version's better, the original one. So that's a good thing. Next on my list is going to be the Mickey Premium Ice Cream Bar, which you can get everywhere. And I like this because it has, like, that soft serve creamy ice cream in it. And then on the outside, it's a dark chocolate that's nice and crispy. So that's really good. And yeah, I like, like it. You know, the, the thing about those ice cream bars, though, is that when you first get it, that sucker is hard as a rock. I mean, uh-huh. I'm like, like, you can you can break your teeth on that sucker. It's, uh, you know, because they put it in dry ice. And that's the that's the issue is that dry ice is so cold. You know, it just makes the, the ice cream rock solid. So it's kind of you have to wait a while before you can actually bite into it. But Unless I, you know, it's a busy day. Oh uh, yeah, they're not I as know, I've seen. I've 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 yet to see a person bite into it right away. I mean, I usually I see people like try to take a bite, and then all of a sudden you see, you know, coming back out of their mouth is nothing but it's the entire ice cream bar in, in its entirety with just teeth marks on it, you know, into the chocolate only. Yeah, the busy ones over at Walt Disney World, um, they're they're softer on the inside where you can can bite into them right away i don't know if it's they go through them too Mm. fast or the humidity helps them to you know keeps them from being that hard right that's true i mean you know you do have the humidity and it's a lot a lot warmer uh, where you know in in orlando than than it is at disneyland yeah those 90 degree temperatures make a difference (laughs) Uh, let's see. What else is on my list is the Coconut Paletas from La Cantina de San Angel in Epcot. And these have, it on the outside, they put some fresh coconut. And at the bottom of them is fresh coconut. So when you finish it, you've got little coconut shavings at the end of it. And one of the cool things is when you order this, if you're getting other food besides just your paleta, um, they will hold it at the counter for you. So it doesn't melt while you're eating your nachos or enchiladas. And all you have to do is come back up and they'll mark on there that you got it and you're good to go. That's cool. 
Mm -hmm. I do like that. (laughs) Staying in Epcot, I'm going to go with any ice cream from La Artisan de Glace. It is so good. It's uh, that creamy, rich ice cream that's like gelato. Oh, gosh, it's so good. And there you can get it adult. They'll put the ice cream in a martini glass and you have your choice of uh, Grand Marnie. I know there's a um, a vodka. I think it's like maybe a marshmallow vodka, and one other that they'll pour over the top of that. But it's really good. And their newest flavor, which is a, a lemon lemon meringue, is a must try. And I will be getting it again next time I'm there because it's so good. <laughs> I remember being in the France Pavilion and uh, trying the uh, Le Grand Orange. Uh, I think it was Le Grand uh-huh. Orange or something like that. The the slushy or whatever. That was awesome. <laughs> that is that's one of the most popular drinks. Is I that, can that orange slushy? Everybody yeah. loves the orange. However, it's it's never been one of my top favorite drinks. There's too many other things I like to drink at Epcot. Right. Um, and I'm going to stay my last and then I have, as I said, I've got honorable mentions because I was going with all, all, uh, family friendly for my top five and it's the khaki gory with sweet milk. So it's like a snow cone that they've topped with. They pour a uh, sweet milk over the top of it. It's from Kabuki cafe over in the Japan pavilion, but it's so good. Uh, a friend of mine turned me on to it. He was like, you've got to try it with the sweet milk. I'm like, okay, sure. I had never had it that way. I always just got either the that they have, but with the sweet milk, oh my gosh, it's so much better. And my two honorable mentions, which are for 21 and up only, it's going to be the frozen Kirin from the drink stand in J- the Japan Pavilion. Have you ever had a frozen beer? I have not. It's actually really good. I wasn't so sure. I was like, oh, that seems a little strange. But as hot as it is, as you drink it and, and the frozen part goes down, because the bottom is just topped off with frozen. Mm-hmm. The uh, That goes down and it keeps it cold. And then by the time you finish it, you have a cold beer and all the ice is gone. So it's kind of like a slushy in the, the initial stages? Yeah, on top, it's the bottom is like just a normal cold beer, and then they top it off with frozen beer. Oh, okay, okay, cool. So. Yeah, I've I've had frozen beer uh, just because I left it in the freezer a little bit too long, but uh, that was a different story. <laughs> it was it wasn't too good, <laughs> especially I when, when the can it can exploded on me. <laughs> Anytime I put something in the freezer that's either like in a can or a glass bottle, I always, because I'm like, oh, the last thing I need is for something to explode. I set a timer to remember to go back and get it. I'm like, okay, I'm going to set it for 20 minutes and I can go check on it and see if it's cold enough. If not, I'll set it for like another 10 or 15. Yeah, because I've done that. I I have put a can in there and it gone boom. That's never good. And my last drink is a habanero lime margarita, and it's from Dockside Margaritas, which opened up back in March, the end of March. So it's good. It's spicy, but it's a fresh-made margarita. It's not not frozen, not a you know pre-mix or anything like that. So. It's very yummy. Okay, so that is all for our entree today. And now on to our dessert, our dining tips. What dining tip do you have for Disneyland? My dining tip is something that'll save you money. It's, uh, you know, when you go around to the various locations to, to eat at the resort, you know, the, the sit-down restaurants, counter service, that type of thing, you know, they, they always offer a discount, and you know, for annual pass holders. 
so if you have an annual pass, they don't, and, and the cast member doesn't ask you if you have an annual pass, then, uh, you know, ask, you know, do you take it? And I'd say, I, I don't, I can't even think of any of the counter service restaurants at either Disneyland or, or DCA that does not take the discount. Uh, the only thing you don't get a discount on is, is alcohol. Uh, but uh, the, another place uh, that you want to check for discounts as well is the quick service establishments. Ma the majority of the quick service establishments do not take the, the, uh, the discount, uh, but there are exceptions to the rule. Uh, for example, the Corn Dog Cart uh, on Main Street, USA, and then also Corn Dog Castle uh, at, Dis at Disney California Adventure. Both of them take the discount, uh, even though that they're quick service establishments. And so, you know, it can save you some money. I mean, you know, 15% is 15, well, 10%, it depends on which, which level of annual pass you have. So you can save anywhere from 10 to 15%. And, you know, that adds up over the, over the course of a day or a week or however long you're going to be staying at the resort. So definitely ask. It doesn't hurt to ask. Just ask if they take a discount. You know, I have almost always had somebody ask if I have an annual pass there. It's very rare that I've ever had somebody not ask me, which yeah. I thought was really cool. And it made it a lot easier if you were to remember to get your discount. Yeah, I noticed they didn't really ask me that much. If I, you know, if I recall correctly, they didn't really ask me that at Disney World so much. Uh, we actually had to bring it up uh, at one location where we were buying some merchandise. And they were, we were like, oh, do you guys do a Daniel Pass holder discount? And they kind of seemed like, Oh yeah, yeah, we do. I mean, you know, they seemed a little surprised that you know we even asked. Uh, you know, I guess the majority of the people there don't have annual passes, right? Uh, I don't know how yeah. what the demographic is, but you know, over at Disneyland, obviously, I mean, you know, we got over a million, so <laughs> you know, they figured you know it's better safe than sorry, you know, to, to ask. But you know, there are some cast members that forget time to time. I forget often when I you know, first go to Disney to remember to ask them if they offer an annual pass discount because very few food places do and most of the shops do. So I just, I just don't think about it. And I've been known to buy something and then have to go back in and go, I forgot to ask for my discount. <laughs> <laughs> well, the cool thing was that, you know, we, we had asked about annual pass holder discounts, right? And they, we didn't have a Disney World annual pass. We had a Disneyland, but they still honored it. And I was like, cool, really? awesome, yeah, right on. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I was at the- uh, I don't think they're supposed one? to do that. <laughs> uh, well, whatever, I mean, they, they were kind of like, eh, whatever. Uh, we were in Liberty Square at the uh, little ornament shop there. Um, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, there. It's a cool little shop. I used no, to is. always buy an ornament every trip, but now that I go so often, it gets expensive now that they're fifteen, twenty dollars an ornament. Right, right. So yep, it's been so. a while since I've picked one up. There you go. So that's my tip. Okay, and my tip is if you have an advanced dining reservation and you need to cancel it, do not forget to cancel it the day before by 10 p.m. Otherwise, Disney will consider that a no-show, and it, they'll charge you $10 per person, or at Victorian Alberts, it's $25 per person. You're a family of six. That's a lot of money to lose out on, so don't forget to cancel your advanced dining reservations if you can't make them. Do you have anything else? That's it. This is our 10th episode. Jeez. Happy 10th episode. Yay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's our meal for you today. Jay, tell everybody where they can find you. Oh, you can follow me on Twitter at Magical Food Tour. Uh, you can also check out the uh, Diz Geek podcast. Um, uh, we do a little show about Disneyland. So if you're interested in Disneyland, it's, uh, you know, my, my buddies, Daniel and Tommy and Chris, we all discuss uh, everything that's going on at the resort. And uh, if uh, you want to check me out uh, on the website, uh, magicalfoodtour.com, I'd appreciate that as well. And if you happen to book a little, you know, tour, a little food tour at Disneyland, hey, hey, what's up? Let's do this. 
And I get a discount, right? That's right. 20% discount. Use the Dining at Disney discount and I'll hook you up with that 20% discount. Which is always nice. Oh, yeah. Well, you can find me at Dining at Disney at DiningAtDisney.com. You can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and now Periscope. It's Dining at Disney. Are you on Periscope? You know what? I I would do Periscope, but the problem is that I have a very limited data plan, so it wouldn't do me any good. Oh, yeah. That adds up if you have uh, have data data plans. Luckily, we've got, you know, the family package where you don't have to worry about too, too much. I think we've got something like 40 included. So we got a special deal. Well, you paid for this amount, but you got... Yeah. More than twice. So, yeah, I have two gigs. So that's it. (laughs) Oh, wow. Yeah. So basically, I can go uh, check my email and and Twitter and once in a while Facebook. But if I do anything much beyond that, then uh, yeah, I want to get. Well, I'm on T Mobile, so they wouldn't really charge me on bridges. But at the same time, they throttled my, the rest of my data. So I'm like, you know, trying to go to a website and it's like, okay, the bar is just slowly creeping on, creeping up, creeping up. And then finally the, the page loads and it just, it's a pain in the butt. If I've, gone, I've gone over a few times. So yeah, it's not, not a fun thing. Uh, yeah, that but would make okay. me I, I, you know, I, I really don't use that much data and, you know, I, I don't know much about Periscope and I, you know, I don't really, I don't go to Disneyland as, frequent enough to justify you know getting extra data just for periscope so that's just my my take now at disney world they have wi-fi you can connect to for free yeah that's so i'm looking forward to one testing day. it out i just signed up for it i haven't done it yet uh so make sure you find us on periscope because soon i'll be making some videos they look like fun. So uh, on YouTube, we are the dining at Disney. We are brought to you by Weeby Geeks Network. Please subscribe to us uh, on iTunes and Stitcher. We would love a five star rating as well as a review. So please be nice and uh, give us some reviews. Well, our next episode, Jay's going to be off. And it's going to be coming from Disney World. They are doing a sneak peek of the 20th annual Epcot International Food and Wine Festival. So myself, Tony Casanova, who's from Disney by the Numbers in the Disney Parks podcast, as well as Al John Go from Jedi Masketeer and WDW Tiki Room, will be joining me to discuss the, this event. So you'll want to make sure if you're heading to Walt Disney World, that you check that out. Thanks for listening and bon appetit.